This seminar is part of the AHEAD Capacity Building Program to promote accessible heritage experiences in the cultural sector. So, what are we going to do today? So, we are going to talk about uh, uh, design uh, uh, thinking, so to contextualize uh, design thinking uh, as a human-centered framework uh, for creative uh, problem-solving within the AHEAD uh, uh, context. Uh, we are going to frame the ACE adaptations of design thinking for the unique arts and cultural challenges. And we are going to try to recognize and see how to develop engaging, uh, mission aligned cultural offerings for diverse uh, community. And what does it mean, this? And uh, uh, also, you know, try to be aware of the pitfalls in design thinking and the ACE the method methodology, because uh, we need, uh, in order to do better, we need to understand the full, uh, uh, the full picture. So just for a second, for one minute, I will ask you to write down what comes to your mind when you hear the word human-centered design. Just write it down uh, on a note. I will leave you one minute. We will come back to this uh, later. Hey, Antonia in the chat. Or not? No, 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 on a, uh, on a piece of paper, on a piece of paper. Oh. Okay. Yeah. For, for now, for yourself. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Macarena. Okay, I will uh, get back to this. So we'll I'll uh, go on with the presentation. So just to give a little bit of context uh, on why today, particularly, we are talking a lot about uh, uh, you know human centered design, design thinking, especially in the cultural sector. Of course, you know, society is changing. We are changing, our audiences are changing. They valuing more experiences and there are also more values aware, values oriented. So we, we, this is something we will also see during our AHEAD seminars, how it's important to express explicitly or implicitly are values uh, because audiences are attracted to um, the way a, an orga a cultural organization expresses their values. And of course, I'm not saying anything new about digital technology, how is uh, shaping our lives, uh, how is uh, creating spaces that connect the physical and the digital world or all in being in a, a virtual world. And cultural organization also uh, are more interconnected systems, are more seen as interconnected systems and not like island working on their own. And uh, uh, there is this need to be more aware of the impact they are uh, um, uh, making. Of course, also fund funding systems are changing. And uh, I think uh, uh, something that we also understood is that relevance is something that we can actually lose, is, ne is never given for granted. And uh, so why we need to talk about human-centered design? 
because uh, we are managing a lot of uh, complexity. So especially when solutions are uh, unknown, where uh, there is no recipe to follow, there is a strong need to innovate. And this requires an approach based on co-designing, based on uh, collaborative approach, people engagement, uh, and what is uh, the what is the framed under uh, what is so called framed under human center design we have been hearing a lot about humans and people so far but before diving deep into um uh, you know what is uh, design thinking and what are uh, uh, human centered uh, approaches i just want to go back again uh, uh, to the term uh, relevance and uh, also in connection with uh, the Eustos uh, last uh, seminar. And uh, I'm bringing here a definition of uh, Nina uh, Simon. She's uh, an expert on audience engagement and development. And um, I think uh, her defi defi definition really is linked to what we are going to explore today and throughout the ahead um, um, process. And it's uh, uh, really linked also to our manifesto. So Nina Simon defines relevance as a key that unlocks meaning. It's about making something matter to someone, which involves, of course, understanding their needs, interests, and where they belong, you know, their context. And uh, she uses the metaphor of doors of relevance. So meaning that uh, uh, cultural institutions should be accessible, should be clearly uh, identifiable by people, clearly marked. And so that this can help people to make a connection between their own lives and the institutional offering. So uh, I think uh, we'll get back to this uh, also at the end, but I think it was uh, important to reframe a little bit what we mean by relevance. Of course, each of you will have uh, his own, her own meaning of uh, uh, relevance. So let's uh, go back uh, again, uh, you know, to the, literature regarding what is human-centered design, uh, what are human-centered design thinking approaches. Um, so human-centered design is a creative approach to problem solving. It's a process that starts with the people you are designing with and ends with new solutions that are purposely built to suit their needs. I must you know, say that uh, there is no single definition for design thinking because uh, design thinking is like, uh, given the basis, which uh, uh, I will uh, show you now, it's really, uh, it evolves. Uh, somebody thinks it more as a mindset. Some, somebody thinks it more uh, as a, a method, as a tool, as a strategy. Uh, it really evolves. Uh, uh, it's a practice that evolves and, uh, uh, let's say, regenerates itself uh, uh, with uh, um, the uses uh, that have been applied in different sectors. Uh, so it's a very well-known method, strategy that has been applied really in schools settings, in business settings, in museums settings, in theater settings, social health settings. So it really evolves with all the practice, the practices that are you know, applied uh, uh, everywhere. So given this, uh, given that it's, uh, mm, you know, uh, a, everyone then can build its own meaning of design thinking, but in principle, uh, it has uh, 
you know, some, uh, let's say, step stages that we uh, have to take into account. Uh, but of course, they might be not linear, but um, let's say that to help us understand design thinking, uh, it's also important to see what are the different steps, which are also the steps that we are going to take in the AHEAD labs. So the first step is to emphasize, uh, is to really connect to understand the user's perspective. It's what we call also the discovery phase. Once we manage to understand the context of a user's need, we need to define the real problem, you know, the real problem that we want to address. After that, and so we start, we hold on solutions. You know, we just take a moment to see what's going on. Then after, you know, uh, gathering uh, all the information, the data that we need, we try to think about uh, new exciting solutions. And uh, we also have to try to challenge our assumptions and really go wild with ideas. Then we have to test them, these ideas. We have to prototype them. We have to involve uh, the users. We have to see how these ideas uh, work. And so this is the uh, prototype and testing phase. Some uh, processes, visual processes, uh, instead of the testing phase, they would add the sharing because it's also really important in design thinking, which is a collaborative process, to share, always share internally inside your organization and externally with your audiences. But we will see also uh, uh, this uh, uh, again in a moment. So I got this from uh, the Design Thinking for Libraries Toolkit, because it's also how we were thinking about our AHEAD labs. So really to pose our judgment, you know, not to think straight away about solutions. And it's really difficult for us because uh, we need to react. Uh, we need to really, <laughs> uh, we are always asked <laughs> to bring our solutions as uh, cultural professionals. Um, but the idea is really to hold and uh, find the inspiration, discovery, uh, the awareness, be aware of what's happening around us, what's happening in the life uh, of our uh, uh, of the people that we would like to involve. And then trying to really ideate, co-ideate with our users or uh, with the staff, and then um, set up a system of uh, continuous uh, iteration and experimental feedback. But these things, there are all things that we will see, you know, slowly uh, when we're going to start our AHEAD labs. So design thinking, as I said before, is extremely useful when we, we have to tackle complex problems that are called uh, ill-defined or unknown. Mm -hmm. because uh, it really puts, uh, we really need to rec reconnect ourselves uh, with the, the human needs, uh, you know, and we need to reframe the problem in a more centric way. It's really, really, I mean, I think design thinking, human-centered approaches, it's a really way of reconnecting with our uh, um, audiences uh, and even with ourselves, uh, uh, with our purpose uh, as an organization is, and uh, as an individual. Uh, just to reframe this, uh, that really at the heart of design thinking, there are people, there is the empathy, uh, and us uh, as designer, uh, we need to develop, use tools to understand them. We are going to use creativity to approach them in a really openly and proactive way. 
and uh, you know we need to you know really learn how to collaborate with each other in fact uh, uh, one of the important thing things of uh, design thinking is really the change of perspective and uh, we are seeing this now that we are not focusing anymore on the products uh, on the cultural object uh, uh, on the not only on preserving uh, uh, the object but we are more moving towards people and their goals and uh, you know by changing this uh, perspective we can design more effect effectively and sustainably over time. So when I say change of perspective, what we will see is that uh, if we say we don't have many young visitors, the idea of putting ourselves in the shoes of our target audience is really asking ourselves the question differently. Is it about reframing it as how can we make young people more interested in visiting the museum? It's really reframing you know, the perspective on the user's needs and not on our needs. And we are going to see a lot of tools regarding this. But design thinking is also a learning by doing approach. So as I said before, is uh, all the steps that I showed you earlier, you will always go back again and reflect on what you have discovered in the empathy phase. Maybe you are going to review your ideas. You are going to iterate and uh, you know implement, grow, uh, modify the ideas thanks to the feedback that you are um, continuously uh, gaining. So really design thinking is about having the right mindset. In fact, it would be really important to adopt what is called a beginner's mind. So really to remain open, curious, and uh, not assume uh, nothing and try to embrace uh, this uh, confusion, this ambiguity as an opportunity. Because it's well known that uh, um, when you start these processes, you can feel uh, a bit confused at the beginning because really you don't know what is going to be the final uh, solution. Because the, the solution will evolve through these uh, collaborative uh, approaches. So we, need, we really need to embrace the, the designer mindset of empathy, optimism, iteration, creativity, and uh, ambiguity. Um, so um, what uh, applying the human-centered uh, um, human centered uh, um, uh, methods can be applied to programs, uh, Maria Gray I talked about human spaces, it can be applied to spaces, it can be applied to the services, it can be applied to the systems. And as you see, it's always, uh, you know, this uh, question that guides you. How could we, for example, as a network of archaeological parts, uh, develop a system of, of profitable collaborations, studying with schools and other educational institutions, so it always starts with a question. So, with a question. So change is hard, you know. We know that change is hard, uh, but we need to work towards a small changing changes. Uh, design thinking seems to be intimidating at first, but it really um, it's a process that. Uh, um, um, brings together um, uh, method and uh, intuition. And it, it really taps into the your abilities, our abilities uh, to uh, create innovative uh, solutions. So I put this because uh, even when we try to bring uh, our uh, 
visitors, our audiences uh, into co-designing pro uh, processes. I mean, there are various uh, steps. And so even us as an organization, you know, we can start by small step. We can start with consultation. We can start by involvement. We can start, uh, you know, with um, having more input at design stages. Uh, and then we can end up in co-production and, uh, uh, you know, really uh, leaving the power to the audiences. But as you can see, these are steps. You know, we need to think about how, you know, as an organization, where, uh, you know, where do we are, where do we start and where do we want to go as an organization? And so even in design thinking, you know, we, we can't start by thinking about our existing users. So it's something that we know and how we can, you know, offer something new. So we don't have to go straight away to revolutionary. We can go also to, you know, to be more baby steps, to be more evolutionary, you know, so like an incremental approach. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is to go through the um, genesis of this methodology of the audience center experience design uh, blueprint, a little bit really to um, share with you, especially uh, the partners, the new organizations that uh, were not uh, part of uh, previous projects uh, in the audience development field with, uh, with us. And then we're going to uh, share the principles and purpose of this methodology. So we're really going to see its uh, structure and its phases uh, introduced in what will become important for the labs, uh, so for the workshops that we will uh, deliver uh, in, uh, in the three hosting uh, archaeological uh, institutions from uh, the fall onwards. We're going to see also some applied cases of uh, the ACE methodology. The, the, the blueprint is relatively new, but the way it was uh, obviously designed included a heavy phase of testing experimentation. So as you will see, there were cultural institutions throughout Europe that have been testing this method with us within the other European project that allowed us to set up the model, but also after that, we as Melting Pro, for instance, uh, we have been using it. We've been uh, uh, integrating it into our um, training and consultancy um, paths, experiences. So, and then we're going to finish with introducing some possible challenges and pitfalls of this methodology that are obviously open for our group to reflect upon through the AHEAD project. So um, here, as I uh, as I said, um, the ACE methodology, this blueprint, is really the result of a long process. We come from ten years of European cooperation, European and interna international. Uh, these three uh, are the logos of the three um, projects that had allowed us to create this group of researchers, trainers, uh, academics, uh, practitioners, uh, uh, cultural professionals, organizations to work on uh, audience development and engagement since 2013. And if you consider that the last project, that's the plus, ended last year, so we're looking at 10 years of European cooperation on the field of audience development and engagement. Um, two of these projects, Adeste, the first Adeste that started in 2013 was a lifelong learning program funded project. So the um, training dimension was really important. So was the Connect project, it was Erasmus Plus. And then with the Adeste Plus, we uh, uh, received the co-financing uh, by the Creative Europe program. So the same one that we are uh, now uh, working uh, uh, for the AHEAD project. 21 organizations, 10 countries, uh, mixed profiles. So yes, training centers, uh, universities, obviously the USO University has been with us uh, through this entire um, uh, project's uh, uh, path. 
uh, but also cultural institutions, also uh, local authorities. So we worked with the city of Warsaw in Poland, to give you an example. We, um, um, af year after year, project after project, we uh, engaged cultural foundations, private foundations that are interested in promoting policies for audience development. So a very mixed uh, group of uh, partners, countries in Europe, but also abroad. We worked with the US, with India. So you are obviously, I uh, will put the links if you want to find out more about this project. Uh, this is a rough number, uh, at least 550 people di directly involved in learning experiences in the field of audience development and engagement through uh, conferences, forums, summer schools, training, um, classes uh, through non-formal exchanges. So this was our uh, commitment uh, in really uh, creating an awareness uh, in spreading knowledge about what does it mean to work uh, in the field of audience development and experiment practices. Um, I've already told you quite a lot about the projects. It all actually started uh, just to mark uh, the, the, <laughs> the the birth of this uh, of this field of work for us in 2012, uh, the European Commission launched a conference. It was called European Audiences 2020 and Beyond. They were building the policies for the new Creative uh, Europe program that would fund fund the projects from 2014 to 2020, and that was the moment when the European Commission established that audience development was an absolute priority in, in the framework of uh, uh, supporting the European culture and creative uh, sector, that it was an absolute priority to enhance audience development knowledge and practices, to enhance participation, because the idea was that working on expanding, diversifying, deepening the relationship with audiences throughout Europe would, of course, increase the cultural, social, and economic benefits that are possible through cultural participation. Obviously, it also set new challenges because it required the cultural and creative sector, all the organizations, to have the people working in their staff, in their practices, people working uh, in this new field, uh, developing audience uh, uh, strategies, initiatives. So obviously uh, our goal from the ADESTE project in 2013 onwards was really to support, to support um, professionals, to support organizations take up these, uh, these challenges. And so we have approached audience development from different entry points. The first project was about studying the professional profile of the, the people in charge of audience development. Adesse. We connect, we try to understand how to bridge more the uh, universities with the enterprises. So to start creating a knowledge, helping students that in their cultural management uh, uh, postgraduate uh, master classes, acquire the knowledge and skills to then go work within a cultural organization and support practitioners in creating audience strategies. I'm really going through these projects uh, uh, fast now, but just to give you an idea of everything that we try to, to combine to offer uh, approaches to learning and, and practicing audience development and engagement. So we work at university level, we help them become uh, the people uh, in charge of audience development within cultural organizations, understanding more and more throughout the, the years that audience development is always something that embraces the entire organization, that um, needs alignment within the organization that needs to impact the vision itself of how a cultural organization um, manages and offers experiences. And so we landed with the ADESTE Plus uh, project 
into the dimension of how do we help cultural institutions embrace the change that is needed if they really want to be active and to uh, impact and to have uh, uh, new ways of uh, entering relationships with audiences, existing potential new ones. And so how can we help them bring public at the center of, of their work? Of cultural organizations. So this is the path that we um, that we followed, and this is why uh, when um, we uh, refer to uh, the ACE the blueprint, audience center experience design, that was one of the main outputs, obviously, of the Adeste Plus project. We go back to this quote: "Audience development is not about developing audiences." Uh, you know, we said it last uh, seminar, it's not a definition that made uh, anybody convinced or happy <laughs> when we talk about audience development. We, we know it's something much bigger, more layered, more complex. Audience development is more about developing cultural organizations. And this is what uh, mm, this blueprint uh, that was set up in the Adeste Plus project tried to, uh, to do. So um, to empower cultural organizations to place the audience at the center of their philosophy or of their vision, mission, and their practices, uh, we set up this program for change. You will see uh, that it's often presented as a program for, for change that encourages an audience-centered approach. This is where we go back to human-centered approaches, obviously. So it's a blueprint that cultural organizations are invited to adopt, to adapt, to test. And we, in doing so, we try to provide a new framework, a set of training and professional uh, development methods for new ways of bringing audience engagement within the uh, cultural organization. So here um, you have so that the ACE, the blueprint is, you can download it, it's the PDF. We, we have it in our resources. There's a link and you can really explore it uh, in, uh, in its uh, uh, entirety, in its complexity. So it's a methodology for organizational change for audience-focused organizations. It is really heavily based on design thinking so going back to what Antonia uh, shared uh, with her overview of uh, um, design thinking, what is really important? Why can we make a difference using an approach such as the ACE the blueprint? Because change is hard. Change requires a lot of time and effort. And this methodology is based on a perspective that allow organizations to focus on goals that are achievable. It shifts the perspective on uh, risk-taking when we use the ACE methodology as a design thinking approach, failure, mistakes are essential to understand and improve our practices. It allows people to Diverge and converge is a different uh, perspective on the way we uh, manage our, um, our offering. It's always a relational process. There is an element that becomes really essential, which is sharing this process at, er, at the level of the staff. Why are we always trying to invite more people from the organizations uh, to take part in, uh, in seminars and then in the labs, because it's a method where um, the relations and the exchange dynamics can really improve uh, the level of innovation of uh, divergent and convergent ideas. And as we said, since audience development, it's not just a marketing challenge. It's not just about the way we communicate with people. It's not just about being the mediators uh, in, in meaning uh, 
in creation of meaning around the experience. It's not just an artistic challenge, it's the combination of all these uh, uh, dimensions of cultural management. The more we introduce the process that is uh, focusing on something specific on achievable goals, and the more we uh, try and cooperate internally with our colleagues from different departments, the more it will be a process that has a chance uh, to contribute to the organizational change. It's a reflective process. So we, we, I think we had a taste of it just by working around Carmen no, as a potential uh, uh, representative of, of a target segment. No? How, how many reflections circulated in just 15 minutes of, of simulation. It's an approach that doesn't need to replace the way we are, have been working so far, obviously, but can integrate the practices. So these are the principles principles of this methodology that obviously go back to the design thinking methodology. Um, it helps organizations create experiences with and for their audiences. So intro it introduces uh, the element of participation, of engagement of people from the beginning of the design process, not uh, at the end of the design process. We'll see there is a flexibility in deciding within this uh, stage process when and how I am going to include and engage and welcome people taking part in the design process. Um, so there are some steps that we are about to see that we are required to follow with obviously uh, a level of uh, flexibility in the way we can also engage more stakeholders in this process. As you know, in the HAD project, we really decided to um, work also with artists. So artists will become part of this process. And obviously this blueprint is for the teams of cultural institutions, but also for cultural leaders, cultural professionals uh, that want to uh, bring in change, promote something new, a new perspective, as well as it is uh, for us, trainers, consultants, facilitators, because it's definitely a methodology where at least at the beginning, uh, a guidance uh, is, uh, um, is necessary to, to also help people just do some a switch in perspective. No, it, it's a methodology that is very inspiring, but it requires us, to, at least at the beginning, to get out of our comfort zone, to get out of the way that we um, usually uh, work and implement projects, for instance. This blueprint is also the response to an, an observation that our uh, working group uh, um, through the years, as I showed you, has uh, collected real positive change in the diversity of audiences and in their loyalty, trust and support is more common when we work with them, listening to them, to their needs and interests and taking inspiration from what we learn. So this idea of creating experiences with audiences rather than only for audiences. So uh, let's have a look at the structure of this blueprint. So this is just an introduction. As I said, we'll use this in the AHEAD labs. And so obviously we'll go back uh, to the phases and what happens in each of the phases, but we wanted to share because it's really rooted in design thinking. We wanted to share uh, the, the overview of the structure now. So, um, you see that there are different uh, phases in this uh, in this visualization of the eighth uh, blueprint. There is an initial phase that is called here get ready, where there is a preparation uh, time and unfreezing time. This comes from the idea that since the aim, the goal is to bring the organizational change, there is a model that he is quoted here. Uh, where we refer to 
a necessary step for preparing the ground for change and freezing, allowing people. And in a way, in the AHEAD uh, project, what we try to introduce through the seminars that, as you see, they're designed not just as teaching classes, but more as a, uh, workshops in a way. This is part of the preparation phase. Then there's the core uh, process. Here it's called experiment, where you see uh, there are those four steps that uh, Antonia showed you as the main steps of design thinking. I'll go back to those uh, more in details in a moment. And then there is uh, the necessary phase at the end of the experimentation where the organization tries to understand how do I integrate this methodology and embed it within my practices. So how do we keep going, experimenting and engaging with audiences? How can we commit and embed? And we'll see how this will become something that we will really uh, reflect upon and experiment together with the AHEAD uh, project. So just to show you the, the yellow, um, the yellow line and the blue line, they intertwine, and those are the two levels of, uh, of work within the ACE blueprint. We're working with audiences uh, throughout the process, but we, we are also working with our colleagues, with our organization. We're sharing, we're trying to um, bring more people on board. We are rethinking uh, the way we approach audiences in our organization. This is a simplified version of the scheme and it really is closer to what uh, we used in the AHEAD uh, project and what is the basis for the uh, labs. So besides the unfreezing and the embedding, uh, initial and, uh, and ending phases, uh, what we are going to do uh, in the labs uh, after the summer, we're going to create three intensive workshops. Uh, we'll see the duration, of course, we'll discuss uh, this aspect. And we're going to work together to uh, focus on some key relevant segments for the cultural institutions involved in the project. And we're going to approach this space trying to really use the empathy approach, trying to uh, refer to real people, representatives of real segments that are relevant because of uh, organization, the vision, the mission. And we're going to do exactly what we tested very briefly with Carmen. We're going to dig deep into their desires, their wishes, their expectations, their barriers, their, their obstacles, uh, what works, what doesn't. We are going to enter uh, their lives, entering their shoes to understand and define what um, problems or desires can we uh, address with our culture offering, with the experiences that we are going to redesign, rethink, reinvent. So after the first phase that will all be about our segments, our audience, targets, our personas, our garments. Then we are going to use design thinking to reframe this question and make it such that we can really ideate, and we see we use the divergent, the divergent brainstorming, we use different techniques, come up with new ideas, solutions. And in this, we're going to have the active role also of artists, as I said, of other colleagues, if possible, and also of audience segments. So it will be a very participatory um, process. And then we're going to try and prototype uh, these ideas uh, using the, the design thinking approach. So um, affordable, uh, easy prototypes that can allow us to do some testing, to start gathering feedback. 
and we'll see how many adjustments, revisions, ideas, how it will change. So this is the, um, the process that is uh, uh, waiting for us. Antonia, feel free to add uh, where you think it's needed. Okay. I'm gonna try and go a little bit faster through some of the applied cases. We'll, of course, as we do the eighth blueprint with you, we'll go back to many uh, to many cases. Uh, I, I want really want to share with you, this is the most recent uh, one. It's a, a, an application of the blueprint that we as Melting Pro did with Parco d'Arte Vivente, that is an art center. It's hard to call it museum, you see it here in the picture, but there is a, a main, uh, let's say, body uh, here surrounded by by a huge uh, urban uh, park that was created by a famous Italian artist uh, uh, in the 90s. And so this is all about relational art and art uh, that um, digs deep into the relationship between um, people and nature. So, but they are located, as you can see, in a very heavily in post-industrial urban uh, neighborhood of uh, Turin. They're not in the countryside. So very quickly, their challenge was to improve visitors' awareness of their environmental commitment because it's in their mission. They really are called to explore the importance of nature for human life and so on, but they're perceived as a, as a garden, as a green space, so many people who use uh, their space are not aware of what is the Gilardi, this is the name of the artist, uh, purpose, what was its purpose, what this place was it meant for. So we did a very brief uh, workshop with them. With them. Uh, we, did, we did it in uh, a few weeks and they chose to uh, work on a very specific audience segment, so which was parents choosing Parco d'Arte Vivente, this museum, for their kids' parties. So people who go there pay to use their space outside, but they really don't know much about. Sometimes they really don't know much about the Parco d'Arte Vivente. And we explored this uh, um, this audience segments uh, through the personas, trying to build the, the profile of real moms in this case, trying to reach out to real moms and get feedback with interviews using you know, the empathy approach to really understand uh, this segment. And then through the ACE blueprint, uh, here you can read the prototypes that they have put together and are now in the testing phase. So they redesigned the format of these parties, which are all uh, with an integration of elements that are about environmental sustainability. They redid the website page to promote these green uh, parties for kids that obviously is way more coherent with the way they want to position themselves environmentally. They started a new uh, merchandising line that is also offered as uh, party favors. You know, sometimes after parties, kids uh, are given a little gift and this was done through a new merchandising line that obviously promotes the museum. And they redesigned the process of internal management when there is a request for a party coming. What does the person answering the call or the email, what does this person have to do and offer and explain? So this is a very rapid, but this was for us very interesting because from a very, very specific target, uh, they mm, prototyped ideas that were then very useful also for other people, obviously, think about the merchandising. Then we did a uh, an experimentation with uh, uh, the uh, network of libraries of the city of Bologna, this was uh, a while ago. Here you can see a photo with full COVID time. 
So they wanted to deepen the relationship with current users. They decided to focus on the people who really love libraries and go there and spend a lot of time uh, there because they felt that they only had a very limited experience of the library. They went very often, but they kept doing the same thing, not even being aware of what the librarians and the other staff could do for them. So the audience segments was frequent users. And what they prototyped uh, experimenting ACE with us was uh, this new um, guided tour of the library that you here you can see the librarian that is uh, testing it with some uh, uh, people. Basically offering uh, a new um, tour of all the services, rethinking everything that they wanted to share and, and make make it clear that they have and they offer. And also they prototyped a, a new questionnaires, new questionnaire format to gather feedback. Um, yes, I'm going to go a little bit uh, quicker. We uh, are now seeing the case of the Gulbenkian Foundation in Lisbon, Portugal. They were a partner of the Adest Plus project. So this experimentation happened during uh, the uh, implementation of ADS Plus. Uh, our colleagues uh, in, in Lisbon follow the ACE methodology uh, with them. They wanted to engage younger audiences in the foundation's activities, and they uh, came up with this, you can read the format, uh, that is an established format now, uh, 1525 uh, Imagina. So it's a, a format to co-program so to open their programming to young, youngsters between the age of 18 and 25. So they set up a series of workshops to engage youngsters in the co-programming. So they decided to really leave space to this uh, uh, audience segment to define new um, programming and new uh, ideas for um, the, the, the offer that the foundation uh, um, gave. Last case is we're moving into the um, performing arts uh, sector. So just as an inspirational uh, case, because I thought it was interesting to have a look at Mercury Theater in Colchester, UK. It was also a partner in the Adesto Plus uh, project. So they wanted to, this is a, um, a theater that has always done great numbers in terms of uh, audiences, but they realized that they didn't have population from the local communities. They didn't engage people from Colchester. They were missing in, in the theater's audience. So they mm, worked a lot at, at identifying the relevant audience that audience segment. They realized that there was a military base nearby and decided to work on families that are mm, connected to the military base, especially mothers alone with their kids, because their husbands are in the military. Um, uh, in the military career. So they started the designing prototypes to enhance programming. They included new topics in their programming and they came up with discounts for military families. They did special events for uh, um, these kids, these teenagers, and they even did a partnership with the Ministry of Defense to use the space uh, owned by the Ministry of Defense nearby for off-season program. So I'm sorry I had to really <laughs> go fast through the uh, through this selection of cases, but we will, um, of course, discuss more and uh, go back to, to more of these uh, best practices. I don't know if best, but practices, <laughs> if they are. Um, just to, to end, um, of course, this methodology was set up uh, not long ago. Uh, and it's still uh, under uh, a testing phase itself, right? So we are trying to understand how it, it really 
uh, can help this organizational change, I, how it can really help people uh, bring audience development uh, uh, as, a, as an established practice within the cultural um, management. So um, a few ending uh, reflections that are open uh, for our group. Obviously, ACE is based on design thinking. Practicing design thinking means to enter the user's perspective. We started today, we'll do this more and more over and over. And we will rethink all the touch points, all the moments, the digital, physical, that our users get in touch, in contact with our cultural institution. And we will try to understand if through all these touch points, we will be able to rethink the experiences that we offer as experiences that are uh, balanced and coherent from the point of view of the three main dimensions of, a, of an experience, the emotional one, practical and intellectual. So obviously, um, when we think about our user's experience, trying to understand if it offers the barriers that are physical or psychological, or if it offers an enriching intellectual uh, experience, or if it contributes to the emotional satisfaction, then we are opening the organization in all its different um, functions and uh, from programming to communication to um, redesign the space uh, to marketing and so on. And when we use the ACE methodology, we have to sort of accept what Antonio anticipated about design thinking in general. We cannot predetermine the end results of the design work. We're going to do it together. We're going to bring in people in the process so we don't know exactly what kind of solutions, what kind of innovative idea. Will it be more about communicating things different? Will it be about a new um, tour, we don't know at the beginning of the process. We have to accept that it's not uh, decided. And that maybe what we thought about our segments, our audience wasn't true. Ahead is a project funded by the European Union. Views and opinions expressed are however those of the authors only. Neither the European Union nor the granting authority can be held responsible for them. Don't forget to visit the AHEAD website and join the manifesto.